Hello everyone. The title of today's lecture is Enthalpy and First Law of Thermodynamics for Open System. In this video lecture, following points will be covered. First, total enthalpy denoted by capital H in kilojoules and specific enthalpy small h in kilojoules per kg. Second, total energy of non-flowing or stationary fluid denoted by small e in kilojoules per kg. Total energy of flowing or moving fluid in that is denoted by theta in kilojoules per kg. And finally, the general energy balance equation for open system in kilojoules per second or that is in kilowatt. Uh, let us will understand the meaning of enthalpy. So enthalpy is a property of the system which is equal to addition of internal energy and flow energy. It is also called as the flow work. Enthalpy is equal to internal energy plus flow energy denoted by PV. So H is equal to U plus PV that is in kilojoules. On unit mass basis, called specific enthalpy that is equal to small h is equal to u plus pv in kilojoules per kg so enthalpy is a property which is the addition of uh, other properties that is small u and this pressure and specific volume okay so next we'll uh, understand the total energy of a non moving fluid or stationary fluid in kilojoules per kg in the absence of magnetic, electric and surface tension effects, total energy of a simple compressible system which is non-flowing type consists of three parts that is internal energy, kinetic energy and potential energies. Okay. So here simple compressible means the this magnetic, electric and surface, uh, surface tension effects are negligible. So there is only variation of pressure, volume, and temperature that is called as a simple compressible system which is generally used okay, in the mechanical engineering that uh, for power generation or power absorption system so now the total energy of system is equal to internal energy of the system plus kinetic energy plus potential energy it is denoted by capital e is equal to u plus ke plus p that is equal to u plus k is equal to kinetic energy is equal to half mv square and plus potential energy mgz or on a unit mass basis the same can be represented small e is equal to u plus k plus p that is equal to u plus half v square plus gz in kilojoules per kg now the total energy of a moving fluid in kilojoules per kg the fluid entering or leaving a control volume possesses an additional form of energy that is called as a flow energy uh, that is p into v as already discussed then the total energy of a flowing fluid on a unit mass basis denoted by theta becomes theta is equal to so pv plus e so where e is the total energy of the stationary fluid whereas this much is the energy associated with the flowing fluid that is called as a flow energy or that is the flow work that is being added so that becomes the theta so that is total energy of a moving fluid so is equal to total energy of the stationary fluid plus this flow energy so by keeping the uh, expression for e so that is equal to small e u plus e plus p so this equation becomes like this Next, the total energy consists of three parts for a non flowing fluid and four parts for a flowing fluid on unit mass basis that is kilojoules per kg. So, here if you consider the non flowing fluid, it consists of only three parts represented by the small e. The first part is internal energy, second part is the kinetic energy, and third part is the potential energy. Whereas for flowing fluid, the it consists of the four parts that is the same as that of the non flowing fluid that is internal energy kinetic energy and potential energy in addition to that the flow energy is being added now the total energy of a moving fluid 
in kilojoules per kg that is equal to theta is equal to pv plus e as represent here since h is equal to u plus pv so already we have discussed this h is a specific enthalpy that is u plus pv where u v is the specific volume so theta is equal to h plus k plus p so is equal to h k is v square by 2 plus gz in on unit mass basis now the rate of energy transfer by mass in kilojoules per second that is kilowatt so if you consider the uh, some energy is required to push the mass inside that that is called as a flow energy that is being considered here so along with mass the energy will be coming inside so the product m dot i into theta i is the energy transported or energy transferred into control volume by mass per unit time so where m dot represents mass flow rate or rate of mass entering into the control volume and theta is the total energy of flowing fluid per unit mass so product of this so that is m dot is expressed in kg per second and theta is expressed in kilojoules per kg the product of this will be that is in kilojoules per second that is nothing but kw okay so this much energy is coming inside along with the mass so here i represents for that is uh, the uh, inlet number so you can say that if there are for one inlet uh, i is equal to 1 if there are two inlets i is equal to 2 so we have to take the addition of two inlets the total energy entering for the two inlets will be the addition of first and second okay now the energy rate of energy transfer by mass that is denoted by e capital e dot mass is equal to m dot theta is equal to m dot this is per unit mass that is expressed in kilowatt so rate of net energy transfer by heat work and mass for open system so as we know that for the open system so energy the net energy transfer by heat work and mass will take place here that is equal to change in internal kinetic potential energy so this is in kilojoules now we want to find out the rate of net energy so we have to consider the per unit time how much energy is entering rate of net energy transfer by heat by heat by work by work and by mass okay so that is equal to de by dt for rate of change in internal kinetic and potential energies that is in uh, kilowatt that is kilojoules per second so net energy transfer by heat work and mass is equal to energy in by heat work and mass minus energy out by heat work and mass now the rate of energy in and out by heat work and mass so now uh, the rate of energy in by heat is equal to q dot in rate of energy in by work that is represented by w dot in rate of energy in by mass for one inlet m dot in theta in the rate of energy in by mass for multiple inlets will be that is summation of m dot theta in <coughs> so the total energy the rate of energy in uh, by heat by work and the mass for the multiple inlets so this is the summation sign is used summation sign is used the symbol is used so this is the total energy entering into the system or that is a control volume next similar similarly we can find out the rate of energy out by heat that is q dot out rate of energy out by work w dot out then rate of energy out by mass for one inlet one sorry one outlet m dot out into theta out rate of energy out by mass for multiple outlet is summation of m dot theta for outlets <coughs> then the e dot out is equal to 
q dot out plus w dot out plus summation of this so here the rate of energy coming in is represented by e dot in and the rate of energy going out of the control volume is e dot out now the general energy balance equation for open system as we know that so this is the general energy balance equation in terms of e in and e out and uh, d by dt for the system <coughs> so the energy in as we have derived that e dot in is equal to q dot in plus w dot in plus this summation of m dot theta in similarly e dot out we have found out expression so now by keeping this e dot in and e dot out in this equation so we got this q dot in plus uh, w dot in plus summation of m dot theta in minus q dot out plus w dot out plus summation of m dot theta out is equal to the de system per dt means rate of change of uh, internal kinetic and potential energies of the system that is a control volume so this is the general energy balance equation for the open system okay thank you